Well, joining me right now to run through all of the biggest stories of the day is former senior military intelligence officer Philip Ingram. Good morning good to you. Good morning. It's never a bad day to have you on, but it's a particularly good day <laughs> to have you on, day. given your, yes. your area of expertise. Um, we're going to be talking an awful lot today about this new definition of extremism. It's going to be announced in about an hour and a half, we think, uh, by the... Well, with his, he's got his community secretary hat on today, mm. uh, Michael Gove, and it's a new government definition of extremism. And what it is going to... Um, effect is not, you know, people being like a prescribed organisation, like, you know, um, uh, an organ a, terror, a terror group, but it's basically going to mean uh, if you're under this definition, if the government lists you, and he may well name some organisations, both Islamist, far-right are the key ones there, um, that would mean that you no longer get government funding, you can't get a government appointment, you can't be associated with any of those policies. And and the message will go out, they claim, and he said in various interviews this morning, to, to local councils and other old quangos and others not to use these organisations. Mm -hmm. But they won't be banned from doing so, which I think is quite bizarre. Um, the definition, well, it's, it's an addition to the definition because these are the, these are the three points. So it, it, this is a, a, under the new definition. Extremism is the promotion or advancement of an ideology based on violence, hatred or intolerance that aims to, one negate or destroy the fundamental rights and freedoms of others. Two, um, or, or undermine, overturn or replace the UK system of liberal parliamentary democracy and democratic rights. Or three, this is the crucial new bit, intentionally create a permissive environment for others to achieve the results in one or two. Mm -hmm. um, now, the question I'm putting onto our audience today, I'm going to put to you, but I'd love to hear from you, our audience, uh, about this, updating the government's definition of, of extremism. So I've just read out what the update is, and it's, uh, you know, tackling the threats posed by Islamists uh, and the far right. So I want to know, do you think this will work? And when I say work, what do you think it will actually achieve? And tell us why as well. You think it will work? Tell us whether you think it won't work. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000, text on 8722, or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. Right then, let's come to you, <laughs> Philip. Um, you know, from a senior military intelligence officer, it's very important that we know who the extremists are. We need to tackle them. Some of them need to be in prison. What will this new definition do? It is. Well, our intelligence services are placed, do know who the extremists are. Um, but at the moment, the only real list that there is out there are the list of prescribed terror-related organisations under the Terrorism Act, and that's updated continuously. And who now, would be on that list? Um, you'll find the likes of um, uh, Al-Qaeda, Al Hamas, ISIS, um, a number of the extreme right-wing groups are out there, you know, the, the IRA um, and various other international terror groups. But they, they come quite clearly under the definition of the Terrorism Act. But what we're seeing uh, as a growth in society is a number of organisations that are not quite in the bracket of terrorism, but they are disrupting our way of they're not, life. They're not inciting violence. They're not, well, well, they're they're, not you know, trying many, to under, you know, to well, in many propagate ways, in many ways, a some, revolution. Some, you know, in many ways, some of them are in their activities. We just have to look at the, you know, I, I class them as eco-terrorists. Um, the, the, the climate change activists yep. who close the M25, who close the roads around London, who won't even let ambulances through. Yep. People are dying because of what they do. And the police are saying they are, <clears throat> by their inaction, confused as to what they can do. This would allow those groups potentially to be put on a list that would make it very, very clear to the police, but also make it very clear to those that are funding the groups that if they fund the groups, yeah, fine, go ahead and do it. But you can forget about any interaction with government organisations or government contracts, and you know, that's going to impact so you, individuals. Is that, is that what's on? This is the thing, because I think we're all concerned about people who are a danger to us and danger yeah. to others. But my concern is, who gets to decide what that is? I'm, I'm sitting here as somebody who, as a journalist, quite legitimately in my job, as, as, as a citizen of this country and as a journalist, along with many very, very eminent scientists and medics, politicians, elected politicians and other journalists, we were campaigning against things like lockdown, against forced masks <clears throat> on people, vaccine mandates, things like that. And we were secretly monitored by government-backed units my personal information was sent to a US counter-terrorism unit during 2020, 2021. I've received a formal apology after taking legal action for that because I was falsely called a, a vaccine, a known vaccine <laughs> skeptic. Now, even if I was a known vaccine skeptic, even if I was, what are, you, what are you doing sending my information to a counter-terrorism unit in a foreign government? Now, do I, Michael Gove, by the way, was the man pretty much running the show in Downing Street when, uh, during COVID. He, he was. It wasn't, it wasn't Hancock and it wasn't Boris Johnson. It was Michael Gove. Um, now, do I want Michael Gove, with all due respect, to be in charge of what he thinks is an extremist or not? Because, you know, 
I don't like the people in Just Stop Oil, the people who make those demonstrations. I don't like, you know, the animal rights people um, who, who disrupt what people do. Um, I, 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 I'm not keen on the anti-abortionists. Yeah. I don't agree with them. I, I'm not keen, definitely not keen on, uh, on the trans ideologists and things who would, you know. When people break the law, action must and should be taken. When people aren't breaking the law, then, then, then someone having those views should be allowed because we're in a free society. I want people to be able to say, I don't want this to happen or I do want this to happen. And I don't have to agree with it to defend their right to say it. I, I, I agree with you to the point where um, the, the, the line is breaking the law. Actually, it's much better to intervene with people before they get to that point where they break the law. And we've if we look at the government's counterterrorism strategy, the contest strategy, the prevent part of that is dealing with individuals who have not broken the law, who've been identified that they are in danger of getting into uh, extremist terrorist organisations. But we've now got people that are getting involved in other groups that are, I would class them almost on the edge of terrorism. And you highlighted perfectly why um, actually you're Michael Gove, and you know, how, how many more months have we got Michael Gove before um, we get we get a new Home Secretary and potentially who, a new government? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? But you know, he's not, he's not going to have it. But you you took it to the courts, and the one thing we've got is the independent judicial system in this country that allows the courts to have a ruling over and above government policy, which is why the government's Rwanda policy has fallen apart completely because it's been held up in the courts. Yeah, I'm not I'm not I'm not particularly keen on on how the courts say these things, but we need to have someone yeah, independent but, but, from those who have power. And, over. And, and, and I would I would hope in the same way that there's an independent reviewer of terrorism yeah. um, strategy that there'd be an independent reviewer of this well, so that well, this, there, there, there will are no appeal if you're listed and, and, and the, 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 the community secretary Michael Gove can actually use his uh, uh, parliamentary privilege to date and then, and then the media can use yeah. the sort of the, 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 the partial privilege as well to that to, to report what he says in parliament naming groups we know some groups the Muslim Council of Britain uh, as a, 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 another group called um, you know, Cage and others that they are apparently uh, they fear they're going to be on this list and they're considering legal challenge but there will be no right of appeal to this uh, so people will have to take a full judicial a review. Judicial review to yeah, but they won't have a yeah. right of appeal before that that is yeah. enacted. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 but but here's that... the thing: we've got a government. They're, 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 what I find what I find bizarre about this government is they constantly speak up about things. Say, oh, we don't agree with this point. We don't like this. We don't like this. Say it's like on you know um, trans treating of you know trans children. Mm -hmm. Well, kid children, sorry, children who think they're trans. They're not yes. trans. Uh, very confused and, and, and unhappy children. And we talked to look see that decision from NHS England yesterday about the trans puberty blocker drugs. And wasn't that okay. good? Well, it, fantastic. But, you know, they, they constantly talk about these things and they talk about things being a problem, but they don't do anything about it. And they constantly see a situation where, you know, numerous government departments and government funded, taxpayer funded bodies are receiving money from the taxpayer, which they then give to organisations like Stonewall, who I think are very much extremist and ideological and, yeah. and, and have very, very harmful views that are actually Wouldn't be good if they're children. on the list. Well, well that's the thing. But should they be on that? I, my thing is the government has the ability to say, we don't agree with you, so we're not giving you taxpayers' money. Mm -hmm. that, there's a democratically elected government. They're entitled to do that, mm -hmm. in my view. But putting them on this list as a definition, I, I'm just not entirely sure what purpose this serves when they can already choose who, who doesn't get the funding. Um, but, and, and it's not going to affect local council funding. But the crucial thing for me here is also, who, who gets to decide this? What this government decides, I don't trust this government. Mm -hmm. I definitely don't trust any Labour government deciding what an extremist is because they're supporting measures which would make put me in prison for saying that I don't believe a trans woman is a woman. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll, we'll get a level of proportionality that'll come out. You know, we're debating this before Michael Gove stood up in Parliament and the, the list of prescribed organ or sorry prescribed organizations the list of organizations that yeah. are, that are going to be considered extremist organizations hasn't been published so w there's a lot of speculation going on I think it is a good thing because it stops us having to take some of those more extreme elements of protest organizations yeah. and class them as terrorist and that would take it to another level that would be so the, equally that middle ground I mean, what's so, so it's giving us that middle is, ground you know, there will be far right groups but we know that you know the vast majority of, uh, of terror attacks in this country and the vast majority of the threats in yeah. this country are from from uh, Islamists, Islamists um, not, yes. not, not from the far right. The far right is also a threat, but it's tiny yeah. compared to the threat we've got from Islamists. And then you've got Muslim groups, again, all self-appointed, well, of course, know, the... saying, saying this is going to target Muslim yeah. groups. Well, yeah, in the same way that, you know, when we were having 
you know, uh, uh, you know, the troubles in Northern Ireland. Funnily enough, yeah, it was, yeah, it, it was, it was Irish people who were targeted well, because they were the ones uh, who were members of the IRA. You know, the, 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 the vast majority of terror-related activities in this country were the countries. The United Kingdom is Irish terror-related and extreme left-wing um, Irish terror-related. Yeah. Um, uh, that hasn't spilled over into um, Great Britain, which is fantastic. And the Islamist terror is yeah. the, the biggest threat to uh, the, the majority of Great Britain. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yes whether, yes, whether people like it or not, that yeah. is that we deal with facts on this show. Um, <laughs> I, I'd love to get your thoughts on all this. Do get in touch, particularly on the phones, 03444991000. Um, let's also talk right now about um, PMQs yesterday. We, we had some clips on the show. Um, the Prime Minister was questioned again and again by Sir Keir Starmer from the Labour side uh, about this £10 million donation from Frank Hester. It's now, it will be, now merged, actually, a fifth of all donations last year to the party were from this man. Mm -hmm. So he's a huge, huge, huge part of their you know, election fighting fund. But uh, Prime Minister basically said he's not going to send the money back. Frank Hester has apologised for blatantly, outrageously foul and racist comments he made about mm -hmm. Diane Abbott, uh, saying that uh, Diane Abbott makes, him, makes you want to hate all black women and that she should be shot. Um, whatever the context, and again, people say, well, it wasn't even a private jokey WhatsApp. It was a, it was a comment he made in a, mm. in a company meeting, for goodness sake. Mm. Other comments emerged yesterday about Indians. Uh, it, he's a nasty little piece of work. I don't yeah. like the man. I don't know why anyone would want his, his, uh, uh, his money, frankly. Uh, Rishi Sunak is saying he's not going to give the money back. Do you think that is going to hold? Because if there are more comments that are going to emerge, and my guess is this guy says something like this every day of the week, um, uh, then do you think it's going to hold to not give that money back, or at least give it to charity? Well, I, th I think I think the money bit has been used as a political football. I don't think Keir Starmer really cares what the money. He's no, of course, back. no, he and, does. And, he uh, does want the money given uh, back because wants, he wants ten million quid off their campaign. Yeah, well, he, he 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 does want that. Now, if Rishi Sunak was smart, he'd come out and turn around and say, "Well, what I'm going to do is invest that ten million pounds in making sure that um, our um, anti-racism policy across the Conservative Party and all of our candidates is being properly funded and everything else, and, and put it into that, make a, a clear statement." They're getting the messaging wrong on what's going on. The whole issue, you know, what he said, was disgusting completely. But then Diane Abbott's response um, in what's been played at the moment yeah. sort of seems to, people seem to forget that she was suspended for the Labour Party for turning around and saying um, Jewish people and Irish travellers um, are, are, you can't, Not can't, of racism. can't, can't be subject she to racism because they, have, they haven't got black She skin. likened anti Semitism to ginger people being, yes. being, having facing racism. Exactly. So, and, and by the way, it wasn't a casual comment, it was a letter written to the Observer, which yes. then later claimed a, oh, it was a first draft. The first yeah, draft. I've always <laughs> accidentally written anti Semitic things in my first draft of a letter. I mean, for goodness sake, and this is the thing, you know, everyone's saying, Sorry, is sorry good enough? I mean, look, I don't, I don't I'm not a big fan of people being cancelled and things. I'm just saying that if you, my, as I pointed out on the show yesterday, what does Rishi Sunak think that Frank Hester says about him when he leaves the room? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Do you think? Oh, would you think? Oh, but are you are you a person who's an ethnic minority that's acceptable to him? He's not a racist. You know the thing you can tell when people aren't racist? They don't say racist things. Yes. It's a, it's a, it's an, it's a, it's almost infallible that one. Yeah. People and, say racist things. And, Genuinely, and, there, and there's and there's if it's an organisation, you get equal opportunities in organisations. And if you look at if you look at you know, what we have from a political perspective, I think it's it's very difficult to call the current government racist because of the individuals that they've absurd. that, that, that they've got into, the into 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 leadership positions. And you then compare that the opposition are doing it, um, and the opposition and you racist or sexist. You know, the, the Conservative Party at least have had you know, female Conservative leaders. They've had female prime ministers, and and they've got you know, quite. Oh, oh Labour, Labour talk a good game and oh, then they, they, they will elect another white man yet again. And I have no issue with that, except they talk a good game about it. But, yeah. you know, but again, if you promote people based on the colour or their sex, colour of the skin or their sex, um, you are going to end up with uh, better, worse quality yeah. people than people who yeah. are promoted on merit. Co um, let, me, let me ask you about Diane Epley, Prime Minister's questions. She got up, now there are different reports about this, but give or take 40 times. Mm -hmm. Because basically, you're on the list of MPs to ask a question, which she was. And she's a suspension, not a Labour MP. She's a suspended independent uh, M MP. She, you, if you're on the list of people who can ask questions, you don't get guaranteed a question. What you do every time the speaker a, a, a exchange is finished with the Prime Minister, you stand up on the benches and and then the speaker can call you, mm -hmm. or you and you sit down again. Um, I'm amazed actually, given her physical health, that she was able to get up for well, exactly. I, I don't. I think many people yeah. will be able to do that this this day and age. Um, but uh, she kept getting up. Now, you've got two men who are having a conversation about her and about the abuse about her, and she wants to have a say on it. I think it's yet another massive own goal by Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the common speaker. Yeah. I know there are rules about who can speak and you have to have an alternative, a government, an opposition, whatever. I'm sorry. It is quite obvious. When the conversation at PMQs is largely about that MP, yeah. 
Of course you let her stand up and have yeah. her say. Yeah. It was insane for them not to do that. I mean, do you, do you, I mean, this is, um, going, this is going to add more pressure on... On, on Lindsay Hall, Hall yes. Um, you know, I, I'll, I'll confess here, I am not a fan in any way, shape or form of Diane Abbott. No, but me neither. But I feel quite passionately that she should have been allowed to say yes. something in Parliament, so it's on the record, given that the abusive remarks were purely about her. Yeah. Um, and that, that would have helped correct, correct the record. It's just kept this story going and going and going. Yeah, she it's, did, it's I mean, non, she didn't need non... Keir Starmer, her, you know, her white man in shining armour, to defend her. It's a non and, story. And he did, he, did, he did go and approach her afterwards and uh, walk back to the back of the chamber and, and he, what can I do for you? And she's, uh, she's and it's reported by others who are no, enough, enough witnesses. She said, well, uh, you know, unsuspend me. Let me get the Labour whip back, which, of course, she doesn't want to do yeah. um, uh, for obvious reasons. But she did write a, a, uh, an article where she accused the Conservatives of aiming to play the race card in the general election saying the abuse she faced from the Tory donor Frank Hester epitomised this approach and the comments made my Frank Hester upset but did not surprise her. And, um, um, and, um, and, and basically, she's, uh, she's basically saying, look, you know, this is, this is, uh, this is what I expect. Um, well, you know, Frank Hester's... Is that a, fair? Yeah, I don't think so. Frank Hester's a, a Conservative Party donor. He's, he's not a politician. He's not an MP. He's not in government. Um, he's got influence, clearly, because he's got an awful lot of money. Um, and, you know, his comments were totally abhorrent. But you know, Diane has to be really careful, I think, in her accusing other people of playing yeah. the race card, especially the Conservative Party, where you just look at the front bench, and that is pretty eclectic. Yeah, again, it is it is quite bizarre to go around. Yeah, you're accusing the prime minister of being racist. Of being racist. I mean, yeah. okay, um, it, it is. Yeah, anyway. It, it, but he does. He, yeah, well, but, he's he's not an Irish traveller. No, no, no. Yes, Jewish. but if he was ginger, <laughs> then you'd have the point. I mean, really, it's quite bizarre, isn't it? And and again, I think most voters. I, mean, I think people could look at this, and it's made interesting how many Tory peers have come out and said this is a no-brainer. Give the money back. I mean, you mm. don't want this guy's money. I think this is yet another thing where number ten, they did that. They don't know what they're doing, and then they make the wrong mistakes, and they give they give. All the play to the other side. Um, I mean, Keir Starmer clearly won PMQs yesterday. Clearly, I mean, this is like a week after a budget with a big, supposedly big tax giveaway. Mm. You know, the government announcing all these measures to sort of be tough on extremism, totally on the back foot, and that is telling you something. I mean, I would not be surprised if we do see a leadership challenge coming in the, in the coming weeks or months. Certainly yeah, after May the second, I, I think they feel that a lot of MPs now that they've got nothing to lose. Mm. Well, I, I, th I, think, I think you're right. They have nothing to lose. You know, it's, the, 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 the sad thing is... The sad thing is that you know, Labour are not winning on their policies. They're winning because the Conservatives are losing. Well, so generally, though, elections see a change of government because governments... Yeah. You know, people people yeah. vote against governments rather than pro-oppositions, generally. Can we also talk about this horrific story about this funeral parlour? Um, I, I mean, I, again, it's one of those stories that... You, know, you see reports about this funeral parlour where... Um, uh, it, 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 where in, in, in Hull, where police have had to go in, they've collected a number of bodies, 35 bodies and suspected human ashes, and they've talked about the horror of what's inside this funeral parlour, but without any detail about what mm. actually is the horror. And I have to say, when I looked at this, um, these reports and I read in between the lines, OK, so, so they've just been basically burning bodies, committing bodies, but just giving anyone a, whatever ashes. Or and Then there were some bodies that were found that people thought that had been buried or thought that had been uh, cremated. Um, you think, well, what's going on here? Or are you thinking, has there been abuse of these bodies? Mm. What's going on? But uh, details have emerged today, a family speaking out after learning the body of their 78-year-old grandmother was left to decompose, allegedly, at a funeral parlour for seven weeks, that it wasn't actually... Um, you know, it was it wasn't cremated as they had requested and paid for, uh, and they weren't therefore, you know, given given her ashes, um, and that and that she, you know, it wasn't even that her body was kept in a refrigerated compartment mm. so that you know it, it didn't decompose. So when we talk about the horror, I mean, this is clearly absolutely disgusting. Oh, it, They've been taking people's money and just giving them some, yeah. I don't know, vacuum cleaner bag, ash, you know. But, but you have to wonder where the ceremonies were, because you have to go to crematorium. And yep. you, there's usually a ceremony, um, even if there's only one or two yep. family members. And, and you know, what, what, hap what happened at those? This, this is horrific. I've been, unfortunately, had to go through a couple of family funerals yep. um, recently. And, you know, it is, it's difficult enough. And then to find out that it may not be the body of your loved one, 
um, that you, yeah. you, the ashes you get and, back would be something and how, different. And or, how you treat the dead is yeah. a very strong mark of how civilised the society it is. is. It, it is. It is very, very important to show that respect yeah. to not just the dead, but to the, the, the loved ones. The relatives of the dead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I know that story is going to run and run, of course, so we have seen some arrests uh, and people out on bail on that story. Now, uh, let's come back to extremism, because today we are asking you about Michael Gove updating the government's definition of extremism to tackle the threats posed by Islamists and the far right. Uh, from what I've told you about, it, from what you've read about it, do you think that it'll work? What will it actually achieve? And tell us why you think it will work, why you think it won't work. Give us a call, 0344 499 1000. Text 87222 or get in touch on X at Talk TV, which you are already doing. Jackie says, no, I don't think it'll work. We don't need definitions. We need action for Islamist extremists, which the government is too spineless to tackle. Amanda says, who is the far right? Is it me, a 67-year-old lady who's British? And Ray says, please identify who is considered far right. This term is being applied liberally across many people who do not seem to hold extreme views. This is a very fair point. Someone I follow on, on, on Twitter today, she tweeted out a, a picture of like, you know, the far right and it's a, it's a picture of a scone with well, it's got cream, <laughs> it's got the clotted cream first and then the strawberry oh, well, jam. That, that, that is that's, extremism. That's what counts as extremists now. Yeah. I mean, but that's the thing, I'm called far right. I think the, my views are as mainstream as they can get. Yeah, but the, the, this, this is where we're looking at the definition without the uh, associated list of groups that are on That's it. what we're going to need so, to see. So we and need we, to may see that. See, we may see Michael Gove in about an hour's time in the Commons actually giving a list of those groups. We'll bring you all the information on that as soon as we get it. 